Setting up users in SAP Business One is necessary if you want to provide an employee their own unique login credentials for performing their specific job role in your company. If you have not set up an employee master record for the new user, we can start there. Navigate to the Human Resources module and select Employee Master Data. Change the window into Add Mode and define a first and last name for the employee. We can assign any other relevant information for the employee in the header of the window, like their job title and position, the manager for the employee, and then we can use the tabs to record a more detailed record including information like their home address, when they started with the company, gender and birthday, and so on. Since we do not have a user record for our new employee, Kathleen O'Reilly, the system will ask us if we want to create a user record based off of the employee master data record. We are going to select yes because it is necessary for the employee to have a user record in order to access the system. I'm going to leave the user code as is, but add Kathleen's last name to the username column. We can also assign Kathleen to any user groups we have created, and in this case, I am assigning her to the authorization type finance user group. Since she will be working in the accounting department, and the finance authorizations align closely with the access she will need. We then want to assign a temporary password for Kathleen. Ensure the change password and next login checkbox is selected, and then choose add to add the user into the database. If we navigate back to our employee master record, you will notice that the user record we just created is now linked automatically to the employee record. Now that these records are linked, if you try to update either record with information that is also found on the other, the system will ask if you want to update the linked record. In this case, we updated the email on the user record, which you can see carried over to the employee master record. Now let's navigate to Administration, License, and License Administration. It is necessary to assign a new user a license in order to permit access to functionality in the system. On the left side of the window, we want to find our new user Kathleen and highlight her name. On the right side, we can allocate the license to her. In this case, Kathleen is going to need the functionality granted by the professional user license, of which there is only one remaining. We have add-ons that Kathleen will need to use as well, so we also want to assign her the SAP add-ons license. Kathleen may or may not need the other licenses of which you will notice there are almost 100,000 available, but since there are so many, it is best practice to just assign them in case they are needed in the future. Make sure to update this window to save your changes. Now that our licenses have been assigned, navigate to the General Authorizations window by going to Administration, System Initialization, Authorizations, and General Authorizations. While the license opens the door to the functionality in the system, the authorizations are an extra layer of security that must be assigned in order to let you enter into the particular system functionality. Let's navigate to our new user on the left side of the window and highlight her name to see her existing authorizations. We can see that Kathleen does not have any manual authorizations assigned, with exception to editing her personal settings. But the effective authorization column shows that she does have a considerable range of system functionality. This is because earlier when setting up her user record, we assigned Kathleen to the Finance Authorization Group, which can be viewed under the Groups tab. If we want to grant Kathleen any additional system use beyond what is assigned to the Finance User Group, we can manually assign those for her user. Note that if there is a conflict between a manually assigned authorization and a user group the user is assigned to, the system will always grant the most generous authorization in the effective authorization column. Let's navigate back to the user setup window by going to administration, setup, general, and users. Let's search for Donna Brown's user setup record. At the bottom of the window, we have the copy form settings function. Form settings allow you to display and hide frequently used fields, rows, and other options in active windows in SAP Business One. Form settings also allow you to arrange the table or row format for each window. Since Donna's form settings are already set up for many of the accounting and financial related windows in the system, we can use this function to copy over her form settings to our new user, Kathleen. Note that you will have to ensure all user and add-on connections are disabled from the database before doing so. Now that Kathleen is set up, when she first attempts to log into the database, she will be prompted to change her password. She can enter the temporary password and then assign a new one, 
and click Update. Once she is logged into the database, Kathleen can then navigate to the My Personal Settings icon and she can adjust her settings under the Services tab and Display tab to personally refine her user experience in the database. Setting up users is just one example of the tools and functions that SAP Business One provides to help make the process of maintaining changes to your database simple and logical. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turning on post notifications so that you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.